Good evening, everyone. Happy Thursday. Welcome, welcome to True's live stream. My name is Dominic. I'm going to be guiding you through your next 60 minutes of movement and breath and just connectivity with the body, having a little bit of fun along the way, uh, working on some poses and working on really calming the mind, using some physical activity to, to go ahead and get that started. Um, we're going to start today. Uh, well, actually, before we start, I'll say this. If you have something in your home that looks like this, it doesn't have to be a bolster and a blanket. It could be a really puffy pillow um, and a couple blocks like these here or a stack of, of or a really big book that's about that size. Those will perfectly work fine. Um, grab that, put it by your mat somewhere because uh, I want to have that for towards the end of the oh, towards the end of class uh, yeah but for now we'll get started uh, lying down on our backs so a nice restorative pose shavasana esque like just lie down on the back let the feet fall out let the hands fall out let the eye gaze shift up maybe tuck the chin into the chest a bit lengthen through the spine and then take the body, take the thoughts of the mind, and let them all start to melt into the earth. Allow yourself to feel heavy and grounded and settled and supported. Let your awareness or your thoughts pay attention to what your breath is doing and notice where your breath is showing up for you. If you have a hard time sensing your breath, you can take your right hand, place it on your belly, your left hand on your chest. Breathe into your belly. Exhale. Inhale into the belly and then carry that into the chest. Feeling the hands move with each subsequent inhale. Exhale, soften and release. Inhale, breathe into the belly. Continue carrying the breath into the chest. Filling up the lungs and then release. I'm releasing out of my nose using my ujjayi breath. You could be releasing out of the mouth with a simple... Inhale into the belly, into the chest. Exhale out the mouth or nose. And now just let the breath be natural and you can leave the hands where they are. While you lie here, allowing the breath to rise and fall and feeling the sensations of the body move, take an opportunity to start a scan from the crown of your head all the way down to the tips of your toes. Checking in with each section of the body, seeing what type of aliveness you, is residing in you today, which parts of your body are giving you the most sensation. And if there's nothing to be found there, Know that I will create some sensations as we as we move along. Starting from the crown of the head, scanning down through the eyes and then the nose and the jaw, the ears, and the neck, shoulders chest and abdomen, the lower back and the upper back, upper arms, forearms, hands and fingertips, 
pelvis, quads, hamstrings, shins, calves, all the way down to the tops of the feet, the soles of the feet, and into your toes. This is your body. That is the only one you get. So let's make sure we uh, we show it some love. From here, slowly start to work yourself into a, a uh, kneeling position. For this first exercise, we're going to wake up our core right away. Just get right to it. So if you've got some blocks, it's great to use. You don't need them, but I promise you some type of elevation here will make this next exercise a little bit, uh, a little bit more accessible. Uh, it's going to be challenging either way. Now, if you're just like, I can't do this with blocks, with double blocks, without blocks, um, then I would recommend a Navasana or boat pose as an alternative um, between high boats and low boats. So uh, we're going to do a little bit of lala, a Lolasana prep. So pendant pose or Lolasana in its full capacity looks like this. Now, if you, you can do that, cool. For the next couple of rounds, hold that for five seconds or so. If you are like, yeah, Dom, not about that life, then follow along here. Hands are going to come onto the blocks. Slide the blocks so they're kind of in line with the thighs or all the way, you know, further back towards the hips. You don't want them all the way up here. Kind of about middle of, the, middle of the legs is a good spot. You're going to press into your blocks. Push, push, push. Now... Take an inhale breath, and as you exhale, start to press into the tops of your feet and float the knees. Tuck the chin, look down at your belly button, push out through the back and round, and hold for 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Lower the knees. Now, every time you press into the tops of the feet, you're going to really feel that stretch along the outside of the feet. But you should also be continuing to hug in at the core and round through the back. So you really think about cat pose, doming the back. We got another set of that. So hands onto your blocks. Press and extend out through the arms. Wrap the triceps back. Push, 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 press into the tops of the feet, activate your core, lift your knees and lift your hips. The higher you lift your hips, the harder this starts to be. Draw the heels in together, tuck the chin into the chest, hold 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Lower knees down. And if you're starting to shake a little bit, things are starting to heat up a little bit, those are all the right, all the right things. That's what we want. That's what we need. Start generating a little bit of that internal heat. Stoking the flame, making the work happen. All right, last set. You can continue doing what, what I originally suggested for 15 more seconds. Or if you can try to lift the tops of your feet for five, four, three, two, one. Lower the feet down. Keep the chin tucked. There we go. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Now, if you try to lift your both feet off the ground and they felt like lead, you're doing it right because that's what happened to me for a long time. So practice and repetition. That's how we get it. That's how we get better. That's how our bodies get used to things. Blocks can set out of the way. You're going to lie down on your belly, come onto your forearms, let the tops of the feet press into the mat. Sphinx pose is where we're at. Now we rounded a lot through the dome, we domed the back, we rounded a lot in that last exercise. Now we're gonna look 
to really extend through the spine. We flexed it, we're gonna extend it. We're really gonna work tonight, you know, a little bit of back bends, um, but really just gonna be opening up all the things, getting a nice variety. All right, Sphinx pose, press into the forearms, fingertips forward, draw the shoulder blades back. So press your heart forward and pull your shoulders down. There you go, press your head back slightly. Feel the thoracic spine start to open. Press into the tops of your feet. Really active, like you're trying to draw the elbows towards the knees. Two more breaths. Nice. Slowly start to release some of that activation. Tuck your toes, push hard into your forearms, draw your tailbone down, pull your core in, draw the elbows towards the knees, find your forearm plank. And we're gonna work into the side obliques here. So all we're gonna do, starting with the left foot, on the exhale, left knee, left elbow, straight for one. Knee to elbow for two, or tricep for three, for four. For five, and switch. For five, for four, for three, for two, for one, and come back to forearm plank. Hold it. Take another breath. You got it. One more time. For five on the left. For four, for three, for two, for one. And switch for five, for four, for three, for two, for one. <laughs> Woo! Lower the knees down, lower the belly down, and hopefully you're starting to feel the center of your body. And wake up and activate. It's a good feeling, but it might feel like a little work. Lower your right ear onto the mat. Take a moment, find your breath, find your steady. If you have an intention for class, come back to that. If you haven't set an intention, maybe now's a good time to welcome one in. Chin onto the mat, hands in line with the chest, toes tuck. Inhale, straighten the arms. Come to a plank pose, whether passing through the knees or not. Draw the hips up and back. Find down dog, really work on getting the hands and feet nicely spaced. Fingertips reach forward, spread the hands wide, press into the fingers, push actively away, wrap the triceps back, let the head hang heavy between the arms. Look back at the toes. Think about squeezing your outer hips in and your inner thighs back. As you push out of the shoulders, lift up into the hips, bend your knees if all of this is super tight. Now we're gonna take some spinal waves just to really start to wake up the body. Take an inhale, come high on the tips of the toes, keep your chin tucked. Keep it tucked, start to draw the tailbone down. As you pull the shoulder blades forward, you'll come into plank pose, keep going. Pass plank, keep the arms straight, push into the arm. Drop the hips low, pull the heart forward and draw the head back. There you go. Now, if you came up short, that means you need to lengthen your stance and down dog. You should be able to move seamlessly from this, these two positions. Tuck the chin into the chest. As you exhale, think about letting the back of the shoulder blades push up to the sky first, then the hips. You come right back to down dog. Inhale. Draw the tailbone down, start to round forward, keep the chin tucked, let it be the last thing to rise. You've done this standing, you're doing the same thing, only with a different body position. Press into the hands, keep the toes tucked. Of course, if you can. If you can't, they can be untucked. Chin into the chest. Start to lift through the shoulders, then through the hips. Beautiful rounding, nice, nice work. Feeling real active in this down dog. Nice and strong. 
One more time, one more wave. Exhale, tuck the chin, tuck the chin. Push, 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 push. Lower the knees down. Give the arms a rest. If you were actively pushing, you're feeling it. We want to work. We want to rest. We want to work. We want to rest. We want to deepen the relationships to finding restoration in the middle of chaos. We call the flow and the movement the chaos. Just like life gets crazy, gets busy, things start happening all around us, and we need to be able to ground and center in the middle of all of that. Inhale, shift the hips forward, weight back in the hands, tuck the toes, lift the knees. The majority of the weight comes into the left foot. Take an inhale, reach the right leg up. Exhale, bend the right knee. Point your knee to the, towards the ceiling and extend it up further to open up externally through that hip. Take another breath, and on your next exhale, draw that right knee towards your left wrist. Inhale, sweep it back. Open up. Exhale, right knee, left wrist. Take it back. Draw heel towards your butt, point knee towards the sky, straighten and square through the shoulders. Exhale, knee through, lower that right foot down. Coming into this runner's lunge, lower your left knee down. Take an inhale and rise. Exhale, hands to heart center. You can bring your hands under your hips here. Now notice, typically when we come here, everybody kind of dumps forward, which is fine. You can do that. But before you do that, let's get that left psoas muscle. Draw your tailbone down, your pubic bone up, your belly button in, and press that energy forward. Draw your right hip back, so pull your right heel towards the back of the mat. Nice. Hold that. Then start to shift forward. As it's going to feel like you're not going to go anywhere, but you really start to feel it on that left leg. Beautiful. Now start to release. Maybe you hold on to you can't hold on anymore. Then tilt your pelvis forward and allow that front knee to track over the toes. And then come back. And then you can take little movements in and out. In and out. In and out. Take another movement in. This time when you come back, start to straighten that leg. So you might have to adjust and rotate that heel a little more forward to come into your half split variation. Tailbone draws down. Belly button draws in. Drag the heel across the mat. And then maybe you start to reach your chest forward. Keep the spine long. Maybe... Reach that left hand over towards the right. Start to stretch into the QL and into the serratus on the left side. There you go. Bring that left hand down. Reach your right hand up and swing your right foot back. Bend your right knee. Point that knee towards the back of the mat. Maybe you grab your shin, your ankle, your foot, your side bow is where you're at. Push into your left hand. Draw your right shoulder down your back. Now actively pull that heel towards your butt, but kick into your foot at the same time to really open you up some more. Slowly release that. Bring the right foot back to where it started from. Come back to that lunge. Reach the hands up. As you exhale, reach that left hand over to the left and that right hand comes over the right ear, reaching towards the left, stretching into that right side body. Inhale, bring it back. Exhale, fold it forward. Left toes tuck, left knee lifts, right leg straightens. Hand over hand, find your wide-legged forward fold. Parsvita Padasanasana, also in the Ashtanga lineage. Hands can grab the big toe, the outer edges of the feet. Chin tucks into the chest. Think about drawing the sits bones up towards the ceiling and that crown of the head down towards the mat. Bend knees if you've got tight hamstrings or it's not ready to play yet.
hand over hand to the left, work it to the back, work it to the back, lower right knee down. Take an inhale, rise. Draw your tailbone down, your belly button in. Activate, push that knee into the ground to really turn on the legs. Draw your left hip back. Now start to reach, reach forward, stretch. So you'll feel it pull on that right leg, especially if you've been sitting down a lot. You'll start to feel that open up. Now maybe you let it give, let that knee go forward, let those hips go down. And then we kind of play. Come back to center, take it forward. Back to center, take it forward. Come on back, move on forward. This time when you come back, straightens your right leg, draws that, or left leg, draws that left heel into the mat, really activates, keep the spine long, and then reach the chest forward. Try to feel a bit of stretch in the back leg. If you can, the more you flex your toes and pull your heels, the more active the stretches become. You want to keep the stretches active, protect the joints with that. If you got super crazy mobility or hyper flexibility, it's key that you make your muscles work. Maybe reach that right hand over towards the left. Start to stretch that right side body. We'll take one more of those. Bring it back. Swing the left foot around, press into the right hand, push out through the left heel, open up to the left side, bend your left knee, point that knee towards the back of the mat, grab your shin, ankle, or foot, open up your shoulders, side bow, kick, at the same time pull, at the same time press, don't forget to breathe. Feel the aliveness of the breath as it moves through the body. Feel that energy, that Shakti Prana moving through you. Release the foot, straighten the leg, swing it all the way back around. Come into your lunge. Lift up on the inhale. As you exhale, reach the right fingertips out towards the right. Let that left hand reach over the left ear, stretch out more through that left side body. Pull everything towards the center, don't just collapse. Keep the activation and the lift. Come on back. On the inhale, reach up. As you exhale. Tuck right toes, lift right knee, straighten left leg. Hand over hand brings you back. Brings you back. Step the left foot up to meet the right. Find a forward fold. That's always nice. Inhale, reverse swan dive. Come up, exhale, find your hands and heart center. We're gonna step the feet out a little bit wide for this next, for this next motion. We're gonna take malasana, but we're gonna add a little bit to it. So, or yogi squat as malasana is also known. <laughs> so from here, my feet have to be a little bit wider than hips distance because my hips are tight. So take the width that you need. Reach the hands up. Exhale, bend the knees and sit down into your squat. Now, I want you to take your hands and I want you to reach them out in front of you like you're trying to grab something. Now tuck your chin into the chest. Brings the back, bring the back of the hands together so the thumbs are facing down. Widen your stance as needed. This is the ready or start position. Push into your heels. On the inhale, come all the way up. Open and press the heart. Push the hands back like you're sweeping them back. Take another breath here. Exhale. Round and come down. Inhale, open and expand. Exhale, contract and round down. Continue the movement. Inhale. Exhale. Exhale. 
and hold. Notice if you have a deep squat here, your knees may be real high up into your triceps or armpit. That's pretty nice. You can do some things with that if you're that low in your squat. If you're not, totally fine. Lift the hips slightly, just enough so you can move the feet back and reposition yourself. Crow pose, bakasana, kakasana, depending on the language, the lineage you're rocking. So, like I said, knees are high up into the triceps and armpit area. Bring your hands onto the mat. You're going to now start to lift your heels and come onto the balls of your feet. Let your hips come up. Remember that rounding we did in Lavasana? Remember that core activation that we had? Turn all that on. Push into your mat. Keep the arms bent. Start to lean forward, lean forward, lean forward. If you find the balance point, the toes lift. Now, if you're at home, put a pillow in front of your mat. Take a moment, grab a pillow, put it in front of your mat. So if you fall on your face, you're protected. But you've got to get comfortable with the lean. This doesn't work if you don't send your weight forward. If you just kind of stay right here, all you're going to get is some good arm strength. Another thing to do is take your blocks, put your feet on your blocks. There you go. Now lift your hips. You'll still get the same thing. And once you get it, you can hold it. Hold it. Maybe jump it back. And if you didn't jump it back, step back, find your plank pose. Either one is fine. Hold your plank knees down if you need to. Make your adjustments. Otherwise, it's an active plank. Pushing through the back and rounding. Squeezing the fingertips, pressing out through the heels. We're going to take a little, little bit of a different route than our traditional chaturanga. Start to bend your right knee so the sole of your right foot comes up. Now start to drop your left heel to the side. Place your right foot on your left calf. Side plank. Lower your right toes down. Let your hips rotate and come down. Press and lift up through the heart. Bring your right hand down. Reach your left hand forward. Twist to the right. Gentle baby twist. Come back to center. Both hands behind you. Left foot comes in. Bring the soles of the feet to the mat. Find your reverse tabletop on the inhale. If this is enough work for you, fine. Otherwise, travel with the left hand. Press into the right hand. Reach the left hand over the left ear. Look down. Slowly lower the hips. Straighten out that left leg. Reach the right hand up. Push into the right foot. Turn the left toes, the edge of the left foot onto your mat. Keep turning, keep turning, keep turning. To the down dog. And we come back. Find that breath. Inhale, right leg goes up. Exhale, bends right knee. Point that right knee towards the ceiling. As you exhale, step that right foot forward. Drop the left foot back so that the turn toes turn out 45 degrees. Take an inhale. Rise up. Warrior one. Exhale. Sit a little bit deeper. Inhale, straightens the right leg. Exhale, sweeps the hands back, takes the heart forward. Inhale, bends into the right knee and reaches the hands back to starting position. Exhale, straighten and sweep. Inhale, bend and reach. Exhale, straighten and sweep. Inhale, bend and reach. Next, exhale, straighten and sweep. As you inhale, shift your weight forward. Bring the back leg with you. Cross it over the front. Cross the arms. Complete it. Find an eagle. Right arm under. Big hug if you can't. Grab and wrap the hands. Sit a little bit lower. Steady your breath. Lift your heart up. Draw your belly button in. Sweep the arms out. Take that left foot back. Coming into a crescent. Drop 
that left heel, straighten that right leg. If you look down at the legs, they should be set up for triangle pose. Reach the right hand up and the left hand down. Reverse triangle. Come back to center on the inhale. Reach both arms actively forward and back. If you got a block, place it. Reach the right hand forward. Bring the right hand down. Find your triangle pose. Actively press into the block, pushing your mat away. Reach that hand up towards the sky. Draw the energy down into the left heel and the left big, the left outer edge, that foot. Take one more breath here as you start to exhale. Start to twist the hand down. Twist the hand down. Move the block if you need to. Reach the chest forward. If you feel like twisting it up, leave that hand on your block or leave it on your shin. Start to turn to the right. Take a twisted triangle. Slowly bring that right hand down, left hand down. Step back, plank pose. Drop the hips and push the heart through if you're taking a spinal wave. Otherwise, do your traditional vinyasa. Meet me in down dog. Lower knees onto the mat. Untuck the toes. Headstand prep or headstand if you'd like for this next one. Or child's pose because you need a break and you want to rest. Interlace the fingers like this. Draw that pinky underneath. So you're making this little bit of a basket with your hand. That basket is going to come about the top of your forehead. Your forearms, just like in forearm plank, are going to be active and pushing down into the ground. Now you're at home. If you don't feel safe doing this in the center of your mat, find a wall and set up at the wall real quick so you can start to build this relationship. Look, if you never try, you never do. And if you never do, you never know. If you never know, well, you get where I'm going. Tuck the toes, lift the hips. And you can feel comfortable with this eye gaze looking back at the back of your mat. Or you start to tiptoe the feet in and you start to activate the core. Hug everything in real tight. Ah, yeah, like that. And then straighten the legs. That's a lot of core work. Now you can also come up one leg at a time. Ooh, that was almost too much. Split leg variation. And remember, your legs don't have to lift. You can be right here, getting used to it. Slowly lower the knees. Come on down wherever you are. Ooh. Building a little heat. That's nice. That's what we want. I miss our heart room. I know everybody else does too. But it's okay. We'll make the room hot. Is it hot because of us or is it hot because it's hot? It's like one of those existential questions. Inhale, <laughs> shift forward. And wherever you are, tuck the toes. Lift the hips. There's your down dog. Eye gaze shifts forward. Bend knees. Lower down into this beast position. Modified beast position. Inhale. Hop it forward. There we go. Find your malasana, your low squat. Crow one more time if you want to try it. Set up for it. Get those knees up nice and high. Bring those hands down. Lift those hips up. Come high onto the balls of the feet. Weight into the fingertips. Lean forward and look out, not down. Beautiful. Step it back. Plank pose. Your vinyasa or spinal roll. Roll to down dog. Inhale, lift the heart. Exhale, find your down dog. Immediately pull that left leg all the way up. 
As you exhale, bend left knee. Point that knee up, draw that heel in. There you go. Exhale, step, shoot through. Find that left foot at the front of the mat. Drop that right heel, push down. Yep. Take a wider stance if you need it. Lift it up on the inhale. Reach it up. Exhale, bend the knee. Inhale, straighten you. Exhale, lean the heart forward, sweeps the hands back. Inhale, warrior one. Exhale. Imagine that the breath is pulling you through the movement. Inhale, we're moving into our eagle on this next one. Exhale, straightens the legs. Use that energy, shift forward. There we go. Pause. Take that warrior three if you want to play. Cross, right over left, left under. Twist it up, pull it in, sit it low. Find your breath. Recovering eagle. That's a weird thing to say. Garudasana. Fly like an eagle. No, I can't sing. I've been told on many occasions I can't. Unwrap the hands. Take the foot back. Lower the toes. Drop the heel. Straighten the leg. Reach the hand up. Slide down. Reverse Trikonasana. Viraprita Virabhadrasana. I'm sorry, I said that all wrong. That's reverse warrior two. Virapritha Trikonasana. There we go. Sounds better. Inhale. Reach wide between the hands. Forward, down with the left hand, up with the right hand. Squeeze the right glute. There you go. Turn it on. The more activation you put in your body, the more you get out of this. You can lazily get here, just kind of noodle it out, or you can turn it on and turn it up. Depends on the result you want. Exhale, start to lower that right hand down. Let your hips shift and pivot. Step the right foot in. If you're going to take a twist, bring the block down, place it back, lengthen through the spine. Exhale, turn and twist. Maybe you reach that left hand up. And you draw those right ribs under. Push into the block or your shin if you're not using a block. Keep that left leg straight. Slowly come back. Move the block out of the way. Bend into that left knee. Step back. Find your plank pose. Bend your left knee. Start to drop that right heel. Take your side plank. Lift your hips up. Ooh. Slowly lower those left toes down. Drop the hips. Bring the left hand behind your fingertips. Face the front of the mat. That right foot comes up to meet the left. So you're in this. Reverse tabletop set up. Inhale, lift your hips. Exhale, lower. Bring your right hand to the chest. Take an inhale, lift the hips. Reach right hand over the right ear. Look down at the left hand. Press into the mat. Slowly lower the hips down. Come back to your reverse tabletop. Straighten out your right leg. Reach your left hand up, push into your left heel to the turn towards your left. Reach, turn, find yourself back in plank pose, vinyasa, or drop the hips, pull the heart through, flex the chin, and weave it out. Right back to down dog, lower knees. Untuck the toes, take a child pose, stay here, or play, interlace your fingers, press into the forehead, forearms, draw the head down, 
look behind you and decide if you're going to take it up. Remember, I talked a lot about activating the core, but once you get the legs in the air, you're going to need to squeeze, hug everything in. So I want those thighs to hold on for dear life, hug each other like they're scared. Really activating through the feet and the legs. The more activation you have in the legs, the more stable you are. You can't just get up there and have noodle legs. You're going to have to zip it up. Resting in child's pose, that's beautiful. Focus on your Ujjayi breath. Focus on maybe lengthening those exhales. So give me a three count inhale or a four count inhale. And exhale for six. Inhale for two, three, four. Exhale for two, three, four, five, six. And just repeat that. Let things start to settle. Slowly lift the head and then start to shift forward. Coming into this tabletop position. If you were playing, you can come on down. Push into the hands, float the knees here in beast pose. Draw the hips up and back. Downward facing dog is where we are. Push into the hands, lift the heels and send the hips up. Take an inhale, reach the right toes up, bend the right knee, exhale, right knee towards left wrist, inhale, back up, exhale, bend knee, right knee, left wrist, inhale, back up, exhale, this time, lower that left knee right next to that wrist, now I want you to take your left foot, move it over to the left. Slide your, or right foot, move it over towards the left. Left knee slides in behind the right. So it's almost like you're wrapping up the legs. Start to push your hands into the ground and set your hips back. If you did this somewhat right, your right leg should be stacked on top of your left for Gomukhasana. So it should look something like this in this particular variation. Now, if you notice, my right hip sits really high because I have really tight hips. So, um, Now, you have a couple options. You can grab a blanket, put it under your hips, elevate it. That'll help. You can work here in this pose. Or you can let the legs open up a little bit, keeping that, that right heel on top. And then place a blanket in between the thigh and the leg to kind of close the gap. That'll also work. Either way, we're going to stay here for a couple breaths. Once you get the legs nice and zipped up, think about sending the energy and the breath into the right hip, outer hip to be specific. Really stretching. Stretching across the lumbar and the thighs. Fingertips can be behind you if you need to make space for your chest and open your heart a bit. Put the hand into, uh, put the weight into your right hand. Reach up with your left. Turn to your right. And then hook that left elbow outside of that top leg so that it turns into a bit of a twist. Go over the right shoulder. Mm -hmm. 
Inhale, reach the left hand up, unwind your twist. Turn to the left, counter twist. Look over your left shoulder. Turn back to center. Now, if you have your legs wrapped up in Gomukhasana, there's a fun little variation. Let's see if we can pull this off. Walk forward. Come onto the hands. Start to straighten out the legs. Yep. And now I want you just to walk hand over hand really quickly. And if you turn fast enough, your left leg is on top. And if you didn't get that right at all, <laughs> put your left leg on top. reposition yourself and start to settle into your pose. Weight comes into the left hand. Right hand explores the sky. Turn towards the left. Hook the right elbow. Look over your left shoulder. Complete your twist. Keep twisting with your exhale. Keep expanding through your spine. Keep reaching. Keep going. Inhale. Right hand releases. Comes down. You turn. Take a counter twist. Slowly come back to center. Slowly start to Slide forward. Straighten your right toes behind you. Push into your hands. Find your left toes. Take a vinyasa if you want to. Or just push back to down dog. Lift the heels, lower the knees. There we go. Knees are nice and lowered. Walk the hands back. Keep the toes tucked or untucked. We're going to take camel pose. Ustrasana. So you can have the knees roughly hips distance apart. Lift the hips. We'll add a little bit of movement. Tuck your toes if they're not already. Reach the hands forward, send the hips back. Reach the hand forward, send the hips back. Maybe the knees come up. So you're in this low squat. Knees come down. Hips come up. We did this when we were standing. Only now, we're changing the angle. Doing it from kneeling. Rounding in on the exhale. Lowering the knees down and opening up on the inhale. If you need to use your hands to get the knees off the ground, just like that, it's fine. And then come up. That's the same, same. Next time that the knees lower. Notice that I'm forcing my hips to engage, pressing my pelvis forward, untuck the toes if you'd like for Ustrasana or keep them tucked if you have really, you're not open through the back and you need a, a little more to get here. I'm going to go untuck with mine. Lengthen up through the spine, bring the hands onto the low back. You can have the thumbs touching, draw the elbows back. Lift up through the heart. 
And then just start to press your hips forward. Draw your tailbone down. Lift your heart up. Let your eye gaze start to go back. Slowly come back. Now, there's a lot of depth here. You can go real super deep. I could have let my hands go and grab my heels, um, which you can also do too. And you feel free to try that on the next variation. But this is really about getting comfortable with making space, openness for yourself in this world. It can be difficult to do that, to be comfortable with that. Draw the elbows back. Press the hips forward. Lift up. Push the head back. Then let things start to lower. Keep going. Grab a heel. Maybe the right and maybe the left and push everything forward. Keep going. Keep breathing. Slowly come out. Hands to heart center. Let the spine be neutral. That can feel intense. Maybe it felt intense. Just be with what came up. Get comfortable being the observer, being the witness. Not, not the judge, jury, and executioner, but the watcher of what arises in the mind and in the body whenever we apply stress or we apply a different state to it. Try to stay away from the automatic negative thoughts that sometimes like to come up. One more round, one more time. Go to your deepest place that you're comfortable with. Start out, hands on the low back, elbows drawn back, lift up, straighten up, go up. Then press hips forward, reach heart up, start to lean back. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Maybe release the hands. Continue pushing the hips forward, continue lifting the heart up, continue rounding, continue opening, continue exposing yourself safely in strength, in grace. Slowly start to come out. Ooh. Ooh, that was intense. And maybe it was intense for you too. Let that wave of energy rush over you. Notice where it shows up in your body. Find your blocks or your block-like things. Find your blanket or your bolster or both. So this little setup I showed you at the beginning of class. This is the game. Now, depending on your height, you may not need blocks. I'm a little taller, so I wanted to use blocks. Now, wide-legged position, so knees open. And scoot the center of your body as close as you can to your little contraption that you set, your little comfy space. And we're going to take a supported child's pose. That's going to help us round through the back a little, counter out some of that camel, some of that energy. We're going to sit here in the next for the next few minutes, focus on the breath. I'm going to lie with my right ear down. You can choose right or left, your choice. Just to walk the hands out, start to bring the chest down, start to hug. Now, if you don't have this set up, a traditional wide-legged child's pose might feel good. Or, close the knees, rest the chest over the thigh, something that rounds the spine a bit. 
forces you to puff up or anything that neutralizes the spine so you can even lay flat if that feels good. And I want you to apply a really restorative mindset to this moment. So what does that mean? It means that I don't want you to engage. I only want you to get comfortable. This isn't even about a stretch. This is about relaxation and learning how to relax. Relaxing is not something we do naturally good or well. Good time to watch the breath, to be an observer and a witness to what your breath is doing, to how it's showing up. We have a couple more breaths here. Slowly start to push into your forearms so that you can lift the head, press into your hands. Walk the hands back. Sit up nice and slow. You can set your setup off to the side. You're more than welcome to keep it if it feels good for you. We're going to close out in our final, final Shavasana. So come on to your backs. Come on to your right side first. Really hug things in. Roll on to the back. Straighten out the legs. And we're right back where we started from. Hopefully a little bit different. A little more renewed. A little more centered and grounded. Bring that same restorative energy into your Shavasana. Get yourself nice and comfortable, tuck the chin into the chest, let the feet fall out, the palms be up, the 
the eyes closed. As you lie here with your breath, with your body in this final pose, can you take a moment to let the mind think of one to three things that you're grateful for today? Doesn't have to be major. Maybe you're grateful to have awakened. I was grateful to have a day off. <laughs> Maybe you're grateful for your beautiful family. Or even grateful for the fact that you miss your friends because you know that may mean that much to you that you even would miss them. It doesn't have to be major, but it has to be. And, you, and as you allow that gratitude into your mind, start to let the thoughts and the things that you're grateful for expand and grow. And let that reach beyond the mind and into the body. And with it, notice any sensations that come along. Come along. Allow them to build by putting your attention and your awareness there, continually expanding and growing. When you're comfortable and ready, you release the thoughts, you keep the sensations, and you enjoy the love and gratitude that is washed over you. I want to thank you all for taking the time to meet me on the mat tonight and to work your practice. Please continue working your practice off the mat, taking care of yourself as you move through the world. And with love and gratitude, namaste.